The race to find a vaccine against COVID-19 is playing out in laboratories all over the world. Scientists really feeling the pressure to develop one that is both safe and effective. ABC's Elwin Lopez brings us up to date now on where we stand. Elwin, good morning to you. Good morning. A nonpartisan poll shows public trust in the CDC has dropped, and this all comes as major drug makers are working towards a COVID-19 vaccine. The race for a COVID-19 vaccine powered through volunteers like Jennifer Haller. There's so many other stressors going on in this world right now that, that I wanted to use this opportunity to, to, to do something to help others. She was the world's first to be given a dose in Kaiser Permanente's experimental vaccine trial. Tens of thousands of volunteers are rolling up their sleeves in the fight against the deadly virus as some major drug makers enter the last phase of trials. I'm here for me and for my community because I have some people that have, I have lost due to this. I have fears like everybody else, but I'm here uh, to help. Those groups most affected by the virus are participating less. Experts say that's because of historical societal injustices and mistrust. Just last week, 17% of Moderna's new participants were Hispanic and Latino. 9% were African American or Black. Moderna President Stephen Hoge says a wide, diverse representation in trials could lead to higher vaccination rates. One of the reasons it matters so much right now to be focusing on diversity in the clinical research is it's the very beginning of building that trust in that vaccine. The FDA says a COVID-19 vaccine needs to be at least 50% effective before it can reach the market. Nine of the leading vaccine makers signed a pledge earlier this week saying that they will put safety above any type of deadline. Whit? All right, Ellen, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Joining us now is Dr. Onyema Ogbuagu, an infectious disease specialist and associate professor of medicine at Yale School of Medicine. He is also the principal investigator of the Pfizer Phase Three vaccine trial at Yale. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. I want to get right to the timeline here. How far along is Pfizer in its trials? And realistically, when could people start getting the vaccine? Thank you so much for having me, first of all. Yes, so it's really been unprecedented, the pace at which these clinical trials for vaccine uh, have been progressing. I think the initial goal now is to try to accrue the minimum number of subjects to be able to show efficacy of the vaccine, and that's very well along. Um, the study is almost uh, fully enrolled, and so we're very excited. Now, you know, frankly, the efficacy will be driven by events, so we'd like to see the uh, people, you know, the difference between people who get uh, COVID-19 uh, illness uh, look, uh, looking different between those who get the vaccine and placebo. Um, once those results uh, show some efficacy signal, those results will be fed into the FDA and hopefully that starts the first steps with getting them um, approved for use in the larger community. Obviously, distribution yeah. networks will be a challenge. And, and doctor, we've heard a lot of different projections, but do you have a sense, at least with the Pfizer vaccine, when that could be, when the average American could get a vaccine? So we're hoping that we, we can generate some results, you know, hopefully before the end of the year. And so roughly about the first quarter of 2021, we hope that the vaccine should be available. But these are all pro projections. You know, we, we can't know for sure. Mm -hmm. And it really just depends on how the vaccine trials progress. I want to touch on another topic here because AstraZeneca had a setback earlier this week when one of its participants came down with a rare spinal inflammatory disease. Now, it's important to point out it's still not known if the vaccine itself caused this, but how concerned should the public be and what, if any, impact does it have on other trials like the one at Pfizer? So that's a great question. So the disorder was, was transverse myelitis, which is an inflammatory disorder of the spinal cord. Now, you know, this is what happens when you do large phase three trials involving a lot of participants that you start to detect things that occur very rarely. Um, the good news for that one participant is that it appears they are already recovering. And I think it's still an open question if the disorder was caused by the vaccine. But the good news is that there's so many other different technologies ongoing for other vaccines that do not carry that same risk. You know, the AstraZeneca vaccine is a viral vector uh, vaccine, but there's so many other vaccine technologies that do not use that same platform. So I think the risk for some other vaccines should be less. All right, doctor, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. A lot is riding on this vaccine and multiple vaccines being available to the world. Thank you. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.